Hello, I'm Egil Thorson and I'm here to talk to you about the Dane Axe. You might be able to see Bragi there in the background. He's practicing with it. Now a word or two about these. This one is blunt. The originals were razor sharp. Now, for me, and I'm only expressing my opinion, I wouldn't have these on a reenactment battlefield. They're far too dangerous. It's all right marching around with them, and maybe as Bragi's doing there, the oh, figure of eight. If you have a line of them doing that, it'll look very, very effective. But one on one, no, I wouldn't have it. So, we talk about the Danax. Came in around about the late 9th, early 10th century. Those history buffs among you will have seen the Saxons wearing, using these and at the Battle of Hastings. How do you select your Dane Axe? Well, this one's too big for me. What you have to do is get the shaft and if you can put your arm down and you're not straining, it's the right height for you. Draghi will demonstrate that again. A figure of eight. No, the uh, oh. length of the shaft. It's about right for me, this. Yeah. He's at home with that. I, I personally don't like them. I think they should be banned. They're all right for parading round in and having photos taken. However, I digress. Called the Danax because the Norse people used it rather than the Normans. And it was extremely effective. As you can see, Bragi there. Imagine a line of Bragis. It's a terrible thought. Hello. And, they've, and they've all got Danaxes. Hello. Now, William. Hello had cavalry. That was now, a practice. His horses were not the nice little horses you see in the fields today. They bit, they kicked and the guy on top wasn't very happy either. However, they couldn't believe how effective, even though this is a blunt one, he just... Ah, smashed that log in too. Yeah. It is said that a man skilled with the Dane Axe is able to cut the man from his head right through his horse and if you like it's like the cavalry entering a big uh, meat grinder very effective and you'll see that on the Bayeux tapestry after William the Conqueror of course these became well redundant really because he had cavalry so anyway let's sum up northern peoples the Vikings the Saxons basically they're all Saxon at this time. All those guys had the Danax. The Normans didn't, they had cavalry. Again, it's blunt, but the originals would have been sharp. You've seen what a blunt one will do. No, they didn't. <laughs> oh, right. Well, anyway, if you chopped a tree trunk, made it. If I remember, mm. I'll take a photograph or video of me mm. making a lagging off. Well, a log, not a lag. Yeah, but to be honest with you, I think they're too dangerous for single combat. They're great as a demonstration line of people doing that and they're great on photographs like we've got today. That's my personal opinion. So anyway, I'd like to thank Bragi for demonstrating this. A couple of things, a couple points I'd like to talk about when doing Ooh, the figure of eight. Go on then. Well first of all, there's kind of two ways I think you can do it. Yeah. You can try to keep your hand on the rod all the time very and tired. swing down. But yeah. I found that by swapping the position yeah, I can. that's a better way because you're less tired. Because I tell you what, it's a tiring work. Yeah. When you're doing that and you're trying to continually... Well, the head of the weapon is working for you instead of against you. So you there can, you go. You can understand now why these can chop a horse's head off. Mm. It's the amount, pound of force when you're coming down. I well, mean... It'll go through the man and you, through the horse. Yeah. And these were big horses. I mean, if you've got a tap by one of these, my God, it was a quick way to die. Yeah. As they found out, let's not, you know, Hastings. let's not forget all those that died under the mm. Dane axe. Yeah, but it's the typical Danish shape, as you can see narrow here, narrow throat. But why is it called a Dane axe and not a Swedish or a Norwegian axe? Presumably, the Danes had it, and it's a generic term for yes. Vikings. Well, let's face it, the, the, the Danes are notorious yeah. for being great Vikings, mm. just like the Swedes and the Norwegians. Well, it was a generic term used yes. by people throughout Europe. Uh, that's in fact the Normans were really Vikings, weren't they? Yeah, of course. With, with a French accent. So anyway, I think we've covered that quite sufficiently. 
It only remains for me to say ta-ta and from Bragi. Goodbye. You can also spin your day nuts like this. It cools you down, but make sure you don't hit yourself in the chin. Ooh! Your book. Ooh. One every minute. Okay. Goodbye. And folks, leave a comment. I can't quite see you there, Eggle. You're like hiding under the tree. I wonder why. Leave a comment. Hashtag day nuts. Woof woof. No, that's, no, wait a minute. That's not hashtag Danax woof woof, that's just hashtag Danax. Although, if you want to leave a hashtag woof woof, you can do. That'd be interesting to see what happens there. Thomas is bound to leave the comment hashtag woof woof, you know it, don't you? Yeah, Un well, hashtag onion. No, well, onion's dying. Goodbye, folks. Bye. Let's go this way.